Alright. What's up guys? Welcome to day 35 of I Read My Bible Today. We're going to be looking in our 1 Corinthians New Testament reading. Um, if you guys haven't caught on to the trend yet, most of the time, um, I find just the most enjoyment reading the New Testament out of every part of the Bible, typically. Um, but I still enjoy reading the Old Testament, you know, Psalms and Proverbs. But as far as <clears throat> having things that I can take away, I typically land in the New Testament um, just because my bent as a communicator and just as a Christian is to talk about Jesus. And whenever Paul's talking about Jesus or any of these other books are really like harping on heavily about you know, Jesus and sharing the gospel, that's just what makes my heart jump. And so that's what I end up talking about most of the time. Um, but we're going to be picking up in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. And we kind of get this like little passage that I just want to break down this evening. Uh, but what's happening is it's kind of carrying over from a reading yesterday where we talked about just sharing the gospel with people. And making sure that we are focusing as Christians on sharing the gospel with the world around us. And so we have this <clears throat> kind of portion where Paul talks about how he is so focused on sharing the gospel with people that he actually adapts himself to even more strict lifestyles depending on who he's with, right? So he specifically lists out Jews and how he lives according to Jewish law when he's with Jews in hopes that that would help him to you know, share the gospel and the message of Jesus. And as he's kind of wrapping that thought up, he says this, and it just really stuck out to me being a former athlete. Um, it really just kind of landed. He says this, he said, don't you realize that in a race, everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize. So run to win. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away, but we do it for an eternal prize. So run with purpose in every step. I'm not just shadow boxing or faking or you know, just going through the motions. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that preaching to others, I might dis might be disqualified myself. And you know, I was just like, I was reading it, and this little like phrase, "so run to win," like run to win, um, really stuck out to me and really just kind of landed because as an athlete growing up, like you don't want to lose. Like losing's not fun, it's not enjoyable. Um, I'm very aware that there are people in this world that are not super competitive, like my wife. My wife could really like care less unless it's at a game of like words with friends. Outside of that, or maybe Mario Kart. Outside of that, Allie's not really competitive. But me on the other hand, I can turn anything into a competition and I love to win. And when it comes to the idea of telling people about Jesus and sharing the gospel, it's hard for me to conceptualize that as a competition or a race, right? Because it's something that I feel like I do slowly. It's something that I do over time with people or it's something that I do maybe from a platform, but never just like chasing after it with people. And <clears throat> I was just pleasantly convicted like, am I actually running to win? Like, do I really want to win? Do I really want to win souls for Jesus? and like bring people into the family of God. And honestly, like right now, no, you know? And that's something that I'm coming to terms with and realizing that that's something that is in me that, you know, and I've talked about on the channel before, but something that's in me that I want to continue to pursue and something that I want to continue to grow and to grow my heart for. And that's something that I'm even praying through right now is like God help me to have a heart for everybody, not just people that are convenient, right? Um, but, you know, he says, like, all these people are, are chasing after things that are going to fade, that they're not lasting, but we do have a prize that's eternal. And there's something about the idea of getting to heaven and understanding that there will be people there that I will meet that are there because of my obedience to God and my passion and my drive and my desire to tell them and share with them the story message of Jesus. <clears throat> and Paul talks about, he's like, look, like I'm not going through the motions. Like I'm not shadow boxing. I'm, I'm running this race. And you know, I'm a very motivated, like very motivation chasing person. So like if I need to clean the house, I'm not probably going to clean it until I have like a swing of motivation that I just get like frustrated and I'm like, all right, fine. I'm going to clean the house. And I will like, I will miss meetings, like I will go hard in the paint and I will like 
clean, 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 clean until I physically can't see anything anymore to clean. Because I understand that for the way that I'm wired, I'm probably not gonna want to clean again and so the house is not gonna be cleaned again until I have this like burst of motivation to go clean. And you know, reading this passage today was a reigniting of motivation to go, okay, yeah, you know what, like, I gotta, like, I gotta run this race, like, I wanna win, like, I'm not trying to lose, like, I'm gonna get after it. And, you know, maybe that's you, like, maybe, you know, you're just like, man, like, I'm in a swing right now where I just don't care. And I would just push you, you know, obviously you're watching this video, so you're trying to read your Bible, but, like, man, just get into it and go after it, because the moment that that clicks, like, run and run to win like run the race to win and chase after it with everything that you have and when that dwindles find someone that will push you to continue to chase after that and make sure that there are people in your life that know that you have a race that you're running and that you want to win that you want to continue and you know paul brought it into beautiful beautiful perspective he says like i discipline my body like an athlete like i spe specifically like tell my body like no you're not getting this yes we're going here like I know you want to be lazy, but we're not doing that today. Like we're getting up and we're going and fighting this desire that we have in us in our in our flesh to sin, to be lazy, to just you know lay around and do nothing. And there obviously there are times for rest, but most of the time we got to be running and getting up and, and going hard and you know really really fighting to see people come home. And you know I want to round that out with understanding that. You know, you can't just like always run down the street and scream Jesus at people and it work, right? Like you might have passion, but if you don't have direction, then you're still missing people. And there's power in understanding how to give passion direction. And, you know, for me, that looks like having a passion, but driving it with patience and being patient with people and understanding people and listening to people and taking time. And whenever I've done that and taken time to know people and be with them, whether they were a Christian or not, it's allowed me to actually lead people to Jesus in a real and true way. Um, I had a coworker at Starbucks that was not a Christian and we worked together for like six months and right before I was leaving, you know, we like we went and got coffee um, with another friend and, you know, as he left, she was like, hey, can I ask you a question? I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. And she's like, life's hard right now. Like, how are you? Like, how are you okay? And we just talked back and forth. And after a while, she just kind of realized she was like, so you're telling me all of my problems really result in not knowing Jesus. And if I know Jesus and if I come in a relationship with him and I'm saved and I become a part of a church, these things will begin to resolve themselves. And I was like, yeah, pretty much. Um, and it was cool. I got to actually just lead her in a prayer right there, like in a coffee shop in uh, Fairhope, Alabama, or Mobile. I think we were across the street, across the water in Mobile. And just led her to Jesus. And it was such an incredible moment. And I'll never forget just being her friend for six months and just being present and not being annoying, not being rude, but just being patient and genuinely loving people in it you know was amazing to see how god works in seasons and moments like that but you know at the end of the day like let's just keep running and keep driving and let's see people come home like that's that's it like that's what we're here for that's what it's all about is to lead people to jesus and bring people into the family so that way we can all like have life and have joy and have peace and ultimately you know we can be with our creator and our savior and have true relationship with him you know because when you have that <clears throat> everything kind of falls in perspective and you really realize how important jesus's life and death was and you really realize how much you are truly loved and you are truly worth and i think when you come to an actual realization of that it's really easy to run the race and to tell people about it because there is a change and it's not just a duty, it's a revelation. And, you know, that's my hope and my desire for all of us. Um, but even times, you know, you get down even with knowing that. And so, you know, tonight I'm just excited to, you know, go out in the world tomorrow and 
like run my race and race to win but anyway got a little excited tonight got a little motivated uh, but 35 days of I read my Bible today are in the books we got about 65 more to go which is crazy um, over one third of the way there so I'm excited anyway it is day 35 I read my Bible today have you read your Bible if not go read your Bible and I'll see you in the next episode